me, Mike, Brandon, yo. <laughs> Come on, man. I like this. <laughs> I'm the baseline. You're the percussion. In this video, in this video, Mike is going to shut his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> in this video, I have training think tank coaches Brandon Dorman and Mike McGoldrick on to talk about our current training phase in the design, our online training program to prepare you for competitive CrossFit. The Open is coming soon and will help you get ready in these last couple of weeks and help you navigate in the Open to optimize your performance. Let's go. Man, I, I, don't, I don't even remember what, what it's like to write anymore. It's all typing now. Yeah. Well, all right. Cramps. Yeah. Happy time. So we <laughs> so we started the open peaking cycle back on January fourth, and now we're merging into the open, open cycle. So open cycle, <laughs> the continuation of the open peak cycle. Yeah, yeah pretty much the yeah. open cycle. Yeah, so. it's really the goal of this is that we're transitioning to get a little bit more sports specific to actually do the final three weeks of prep as like getting ready for the open, and then I think this extends through stage one and stage two for everybody in the group. So it's really how we're doing the final stages of open prep and then managing the open. It's also we where we to start to deviate cool the programs a little bit, right? Yeah. So like the, what the masters will be doing will look much different over the next six weeks as they lead in from stage one to stage two versus maybe our elite or RX or intermediate paths. Yeah, let's yeah exactly. Let's so let's start we, with training. Mike. Yeah, we, we, we categorize it into really uh, 36 simple divisions <laughs> that if your name starts from A to M, no, <laughs> no for, like Brandon was saying, so uh, with the RX, right? So Basically, what we'd said at the beginning of the cycle was what we know about what the season looks like is, you know, different divisions are going to have different points at which they peak. So right now with where we're at, we're what, roughly three to four weeks out of the start of the first week of the Open. RX at this point is going to, if you're in the RX, the goal is basically to be at your best for the start of stage two, right? So we're just basically continuing training and we're going to start the taper down actually through the first three weeks of the open. I just want to cut you off real quick. An RX athlete is essentially somebody in the sport with who has all of the skills to be elite, maybe a little bit less fit, but mostly that's a result of just time management and only having one quality session per day to dedicate to the sport as opposed to an elite who's training all the time. Um, but that's yeah, kind of exactly. the tier of athlete we're going after yeah. with that division. And they had the expectation of making it through stage one, not easy, but it's not the main concern in their training. They're not expecting to have to redo all the workouts. They, sh they are expecting to basically plan to peak, to be at their best for stage two. Yeah. And that could be somebody getting ready for a team or somebody that wants to make the sanctionals or whatever the case may be. Yeah. All so, right. so with this much time out, we are going to continue, uh, strength progressions a little further. They're not going to be as linear and structured and consistent on a day-to-day -day basis where like every Monday is like back squat only. We're going to make sure now that like we are continuing some consistent progressions and strength work, but we're going to make sure that you're hitting all the lifts because we don't know what's going to show up in stage two. It could be a 10 rep max overhead squat from the floor. It could be fine, a, a three rep max unbroken hang squat snatch. It could be all these different variations. And I think you need to be, you need to make sure that you've prepared for all of those leading into it. So we're basically trying to peak all of them. For stage two. For stage two. Yeah, that's think, the strength side of it. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a big mistake that, you know, maybe a less informed athlete or an athlete with less experience could make. It's almost like a trap to think that that first stage of the open is like, I got to put all my competition focus on this. Because if you do, and that's three weeks of training and then a one week break, and then you do your stage two, four weeks is a pretty good amount of time to severely detrain your strength. So I yeah. think maintaining your strength progressions through that stage one portion is pretty important and doing it in a little bit more of a varied way where maybe it's not as linear as we went through the first six weeks yep. of the program and having that will kind of allow people to be a little bit more prepped for whatever might come out. Yeah. So the other thing too is right, like stage one, we don't know how many workouts they're going to release each week. So we're just assuming that it's going to be one right now. And then we'll just kind of change on the fly as they come out each week. If anything adjusts to that, the second thing to, to know is that Stage two, we're guessing that there's going to be multiple workouts within a very short time frame, of probably less than a week to do, right? So you need to be prepared for that kind of repeatable volume, right? You need to be prepared to do four to five to six Metcons in the course of like four to five days. So as we uh, work through this uh, cycle right now, the weekends are actually going to start doubling up a little bit or not necessarily like in training sessions, but just basically doing a throwdown. You're going to rest and you're going to do another Metcon just to kind of get used to that turnaround of having to do two workouts in a day that are 
that are difficult and that are sport based. Yeah. And I think for athletes who are trying to take notes before this and think about like, what are the major problems that athletes face in online qualifiers things? And I think for RX athletes, a lot of it from what I would observe would just be overthinking. Yeah. You get in there and you're like wondering, should I do more? Should I do this? And you only have a couple of weeks to really get ready for the open. So a lot of them would be doing too much too like too close to it and almost like burning themselves out before yeah. they even get to the competitive floor and through the open, not really knowing what to prioritize. So I think kind of what we offer through that period of time is we don't know exactly what's coming. So we can't say what the layout is going to look like in the open, but we've been through this enough to know like, all right, we can critically think about it when it comes out on Thursday and set up a structure that allows you to you know, hit the workouts, still get good quality training in and still hit the peak at the right time without taking too many risks in training. Yeah. That's a good point you bring up. I, I see a lot of people basically, they lose trust in their training as you know, danger is the highest near the finish line. Like as they get closest to their competition, they kind of start to lose trust and the wheels fall off in all the work they've actually put in where the focus needs to be on just dialing in your performance, trust all the work that you've put in over the last several months. Cause like the hay is in the barn at that point, just again, like trust that you've done all the right things and just work on moving really fast, dialing and execution and just being ready for game day. So we don't have me on the podcast, but I thought that if I had a wig, I could be a good <laughs> fill in for her. Yeah. For I think of the three of us, you're the closest fit. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the biggest change with regards to intermediate is that we are almost considering intermediate now the stage one division at yeah. the same time. So it's still intermediate athletes for RX athletes that could potentially be on the fence that they should be qualifying or for masters athletes that are not a hundred percent confident that they could, well, say 95% confident that they'll make it through stage one into the age group qualifier. We're basically recommending that all of those athletes now move into the intermediate slash stage one path yep, where the yep. focus there now is going to be much more specific to what we already know. We got yeah. a list of movements that came out. We know exactly what they said is going to be tested with. So all of the more complicated stuff that we'll see in the RX and in an elite path, that's really kind of geared towards stage two is now going to be stripped out and we're yep. going to get much more simple and down to the basics for the last couple of weeks to give people the best opportunity. And this is also going to be the training path where we're going to put the repeats in there. Yeah, provide yeah. structure and like give yeah. advice. When this workout comes out, we're going to, that night, we're going to build the plan in the next week of training based on you doing a repeat in that workout. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's important for everyone to know. So the, the kind of impetus to move everyone there is that that training division, we on Thursday night, once the workout's released, we will plan a template that's a repeat template for the stage one division or yeah. the intermediate division. For the other divisions, we're going to plan a template that they test on Friday. We do recovery work, plus maybe some other stuff based on the division, whatever they need to work on for stage two. And then the rest of the week will still be written around whatever came out. So each week, you're going to be getting the workouts for the week on Thursday night after it's released. But we are individualizing that towards the divisions. Yeah. And I think that's really important for what people don't realize about a this. So now it's a three week competition they get very lost in the moment of the emotions and they yeah. let the emotions govern the decisions about when to repeat and how to repeat. So people in week one of the open will repeat the workout four times. They yeah. might do it on Friday morning, not be happy, come in, do Friday night lights, do it again on Saturday and then do it again on Sunday. Now you might get better on all of those attempts and optimize your score in week one, but because the leaderboard is distributed over the course of three weeks from a, aggregate standpoint, that's actually probably a worse strategy because you're much more likely to then shit the bed in week three or yeah. week two. So it's really about figuring out how do you keep your energy levels optimized and do intelligent repeats and have some structure to keep your fitness either maintained or rising through that three week period. And that's really what our goal is when we get the workout is to critically think about like, all right, well, these are the movements that already came out with these equipment yep. here. So that can get crossed off the list. Here's what hasn't come out. You know, here's kind of the contraction profile, of the workout and how much recovery will be. And we go through that process to create some sort of a structure. So that way you're focused for three weeks, yep. as opposed to being what athletes are, is they're very focused on the specific workout and the leaderboard, yeah. which ends up being a worse way to compete. Well, it's also important to note that for the 34 and under division, you have a one week layoff and then you're going into stage two. So mm -hmm. it's also important that you're not doing too much 
or too little, depending on what you're doing during those, the stage one, those three weeks. And that's what we're offering is a plan for those in the RX division. That's our division that if you're 34 and under, you're going to make it through and we're prepping you still for stage two. Our stage one or intermediate division, we're planning to make sure that we're doing your, we're giving you the absolute best Plan, whatever, yeah, plan, plan, whatever you to want to call it, it yeah. to get through if you can. And if not, at least we're giving you the best opportunity to do those repeats. So that's yeah, the yeah. way to look at I it. I think having a structure to rely on really helps you kind of trust the decisions you're making. If you don't have a structured plan going into how you're going to do these repeats through the, through the open, you burn yourself out really quickly. Cause you're like, you, you act on impulse way too often because yeah. competitions are not comfortable. <laughs> you want out of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Like your body, yeah. everything, when you're in the middle of a competition, everything is telling your body like, stop yeah. this. I want out of it. So yeah. you start making impulse decisions. Yeah. Having a plan like this and a structure really helps you kind of like dial in, stay a little more focused and then, you know, being okay with taking an extra rest day so you can develop, you know, work some speed of the movement patterns and then come back and actually have a successful retemp. Yeah. I think one of the things that has almost been a guiding principle in the way that we coach in general has been a focus on longevity and the approach of letting your instinct and emotion drive those decisions can be fun. And every once in a while you can have one of those, like, Oh, those fucking moments yeah. where you like faced a crazy fear or did something yeah. that's kind of stupid and overcame it. Travis but, in the open every year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but over the long term, that generally is yeah. not going to be a strategy for success. Having some sort of a way to, you know, plan your off seasons, plan your repeats generally will keep people more engaged and developing their processes individually. Yep. So that's RX intermediate masters kind of fits in that. So the one group yeah. of masters can go into that stage one, let's say for the people that don't qualify, we're going to recommend that no matter what they go into the masters. And then you can kind of talk about training in general. Yeah. So I think the first thing that masters need to think about, that's going to look much different for the other templates. So like kind of put those aside is that they're going to have five weeks after stage one to prep for stage two. So it's that we can get a true training cycle. in. whereas, you know, with the other divisions, you're literally just like, it's a quick, it's basically still a five yeah. week open period, right? It's a one week turnaround. So for the masters divisions, the way that we're looking at this is yes, we want to make sure that you're prepped and ready. And that's what we're doing right now in our training to get you where you're good enough to get through the top 10%. Yeah. But we're also thinking ahead of right now we have 11 weeks until stage two. So I have a whole plan in place of what it's going to look like in stage one, where we're still doing a lot of linear strength work because we know at least most likely based on the data that we have in years past, that there's going to be a heavy lift or some kind of heavy barbell cycling or more high powered workouts. So we need to keep touching those. It can't just be hard, nasty Metcons every day that are a little bit longer. You may see that in stage one, but if you're the haze almost in the barn, if you're good enough, that stuff you get through and then that's our focus for those that don't think that they're going to get in the top 10%, just like with RX, we are, rec or, you know, anybody else that doesn't think they can get it. Yeah. We're recommending that they go to the, what our new intermediate division is going to look like, which is basically our repeat division. So that gives you a chance to get through. So if you're a master's athlete and you're like, Hey, I don't know if I can make it through, you can either stick in the master's division, but we're going to do the workouts once. And we're going to prep you for the next week, leading into state, looking ahead to stage two. But if you're not sure, then go into the intermediate division. For those that are staying in though, just keep in mind that the way that the structure is going to look, you're going to test the workouts on a Friday. We're going to do a lot of recovery work, plus maybe some strength maintenance work on a Saturday based on whatever the workout is. But that, this is the nice thing, right? We're waiting again until the workouts come out and then we are building out the template for the next week based on that workout. So yeah. you know, you're yeah. taken care of. Yeah. It's really the only, I mean, it adds a lot of work, but it really sure. is the only way to have any sort of structure throughout the week. Cause yeah. if you write a back squat progression and that's supposed to come out on Saturday and then Friday's workout was a one rep max back squat. <laughs> yeah, across and the and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just kind of ruin the week. So right. I think that the structure we have in place definitely is going to be helpful. Yeah. We'll for stay athletes. up until 2 AM for you guys. <laughs> I was about to say, it's just so much easier if we just stay up all night and do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great for our team. For yeah. you and our team. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do, do my open attempt on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Three days recover from yeah. brain yeah. fog. So, and then through stage one, so those three weeks plus the five weeks after stage one, as we go into stage two, you're going to still see those same linear progressions. And then the CrossFit training is going to look slightly different. It'll be geared more towards what the age group qualifier workouts have looked like a little bit more high power, still some harder Metcons right now for the next three weeks as this workout or as this is released, I'm assuming the next couple of days we'll release this. We have basically four weeks leading into stage one and three weeks starting next week will be our three weeks of more Metcons for the masters, for the RX, for the elite, where we're getting touches on what most likely will come out in stage one, which is kind of that high turnover. If you go to CrossFit.com, you see a lot of the workouts that they're putting out are just 
absolutely disgusting right now, but yeah. the trend always is before the open, they start giving you some hints on dot com workouts or other things that they release. Castro puts out workouts that he's doing or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And that high turnover, lighter barbell, we're going to touch those a little bit more often over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. They've, so they've came out with some new female named workouts and they have come out with a bunch of very, very light, high volume workouts. Yeah. So it makes sense that, I mean, based on those are also the same uh, equipment constraints yeah. that they said would be in stage one. So we're kind of just using that as a, a gauge and a guide for making sure that's in training. Yeah. Yeah. Something not to jump around too much, but when, when I was talking about the plan for the RX and I think after this video, we're going to all create uh, somewhat of like a layout week that you can subscribe to, to get like more detail on each individual path on like what the training will look like, like on a day-to-day -day basis. But I talked about the strength uh, focus for RX, uh, the CrossFit conditioning itself, that's going to continue to raise as the priority and the strength volume per day is actually going to go down. So again, we just finished a pretty tough strength cycle in this, in this current strength, uh, current cycle that we're wrapping up right now. And it's been fantastic. Yeah, a lot of PRs. Yeah. Tons of PRs. People. Got a video from Dylan Pettit hitting a 285 snatch. Solid. Looked pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's again, like as we're getting ready for sport, it's going to start looking more sport-based and less ABC style structure. So it's going to be, um, maybe, a, a squat priority, but it's going to be like 15, 10, five build to a five rep max from the floor in three sets, that kind of thing. And then the conditioning itself will be, you know, um, light thrusters, burpees, and then working to a snatch after more just to, more sport chaotic based. CrossFit yeah, based exactly. stuff. Yeah. But that's important to note though, that it doesn't necessarily mean the volumes going up in the CrossFit stuff either, right? Yeah. Like the intervals that, that everyone's been doing, even though maybe you're getting some rest in between, you're going a little bit faster than you normally would. And the overall contraction volume is much higher than the it will re be. The rep counts are there. Right. Yeah, exactly. So now we're going to pull back a little bit on the volume, but the intensity should be there. Right. So like yeah. I've told the masters athletes, there's two days a week where, Hey, we're going to get after it. And this is, this should almost feel like the open and then we'll recover the next day yeah. to make sure we're kind of balancing. I that think out. it's also important for them to, to feel the, you know, cause sometimes work an EMOM structure can almost be a Metcon. It feels yeah. like a Metcon, but it's a different mind state for when sure. you're in it and you got to self govern your pace and yeah. race. So really that's kind of the major transitioning point in yep. the CrossFit conditioning. Yep. It's like, all right, well now we're practicing sport as opposed to building the foundation to prepare for sport. For sure. You can't really test Metcons or from what we've found, we can't just test Metcons 24, seven, 365. There's a very small number of elite athletes that seem to be able to handle that. Yeah. I yeah. think if you look at other sports, this is what they do, right? They have a long off season where they're building their base. They're doing their interval style stuff. Yeah. You know, I played football and a lot running of it's just routes. like, yeah, running route. We're on air. But then as we get into training camp and that's what we're in right now, then it gets full speed scrimmage. We're hitting each other. And it's the same thing here where we got to get touches of that. But all the the practice of the movements and the technique and everything should have been done over the intervals in the last couple of weeks that we've been working on. I didn't talk about the elite path yet. So the themes are basically going to be the same as the RX path. The difference is that our strength volume will be slightly higher. We're not going to lower the strength too much because while, you know, the numbers that came out, it's still going to be tough for a lot of people to qualify through stage two, but some of the people that are following our elite path are, pretty close to the best in the world. Yeah. And so they're most likely to get through. So I'm still going in with the idea that we are peaking for semifinals and the games and knowing that we still have to prioritize getting a spot, but we're going to still prioritize getting strong as much as possible and keeping that volume up. The CrossFit volume will be exactly the same as the RX path, maybe with just some minor adjustments or additions. And the major change is that we were doing a cyclical progression that was three days a week of running a bike sprint day, and then kind of like a body weight, strong man maintenance day on Saturday. Yep. We're going to cut out one of the running workouts per week. So we're going to go down to two and then make some adjustments to do a little bit more low intensity aerobic work in that third session and keep some of the body weight skills in there. Just like things like air squats, push ups, strong man stuff, just like keeping that contraction volume up a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, just for making sure that management of stage one and management of stage two goes pretty well for elites, but those are really the only changes. And most of the people in that program are also doing some sort of a hybrid one-on-one -on -one coaching and getting their own adjustments. So yeah. I didn't want to waste too much time in this podcast talking about their training structure. One other thing I want to add, and I want to make this really clear for those listening at maybe you're in the, in the program now, or you're thinking about signing up and joining the RX is basically the stage two peak 
division, right? So if you are not 100% sure that you're going to make it past stage two, you don't need to follow elite. You need to be in the RX following the, the plan there. If you have extra time in the day, that's where we're also defining elite is like those that have multiple, have basically, you know, the ability to train multiple times a day, yeah. then your extra sessions need to be focused on providing or supporting whatever you need to make the priority sessions most impactful and then hitting skill development work just as extra time if you have that, but not to accumulate a ton of extra training volume to drag you down right now. Yeah, for sure. So that's really it. I think that's training for all the past. You can head over to trainingthinktank.com slash DSGN. And we have this video up there as well as kind of a template architecture for each one of the paths. So you can understand what the exact training will look like for the three weeks leading into the open. And then after that, it's going to be, we can kind of put some soft ideas up there, but we can't really say exactly what it's going to look like. Cause we don't know if it's one test, two tests, yeah. a strength test and a CrossFit, a longer endurance piece, like all of that's going to yep. change on a week to week basis, but that'll kind of give you a broad overview of masters, intermediate slash repeat stage one, focus RX and elite. Cool. That's yeah. it. All right. Head over to trainingthinktank.com slash DSGN to get a free sample week of the program. When you get to that page, we'll have a sample week for each one of the four training divisions, Elite, RX, Intermediate, and Masters. We'll also explain exactly how training is gonna be constructed for each one of those divisions through stage one and stage two of the Open. Get better at the sport of CrossFit alongside some of the best athletes in the world in our online training program, The Design. Head over to trainingthinktank.com slash DSGN to learn more.